All right, we're going to go ahead and get started here in a minute. All right, Mr. Breeden, uh, so we did uh, have a break, and so we'll let you all get back into your presentation. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Basically, what we've brought you is, in this recommendation, really kind of a two-parter, and we're going to let uh, Mr. Spencer speak to the purchase of this property and the layout of the property and uh, how we would utilize that to build school zone. We've gone ahead, though, and included as a part of this recommendation is that we contract that we signed this contract with ESA for architectural services. We only, because we've, we're only doing a project at a time, the only contract we have with them now is for the Marvin Wright addition. So this would be a separate contract for them to begin work on design of this elementary school. And so uh, in consulting with Mr. Wolliver, we would need that as a separate motion if we could. But, uh, so we, we would ask for the, both those, but I'm gonna turn it over to Mr. Spencer to begin talking about the property. Okay, thank you Mr. Breed. Mr. Spencer. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, thanks for having me. Uh, well, this is certainly an exciting thing that's happening for the taxpayers of, of Murray County. Uh, this information was included in your packet, so I know you guys have been able to, to kind of look at this. Uh, I stepped on this farm for the first time probably three and a half, four months ago. Uh, it's an absolutely beautiful track of land. Uh, it's one of the only larger tracks of land left in this area, in the Spring Hill area. And when you talk about trying to put a campus together, you need a large track of land to get that campus feel. Our biggest charge was to make sure that we could put on this property what this school system needs, what they, what they wanted in, in those three schools, an elementary, a middle school, and, and a high school. Our team has done that. You can see the black outline of the property. Uh, of course, the shaded area in the middle of the track is uh, a floodplain. There is some floodplain on the property as the creek runs through the middle of it. Uh, there's approximately 82 and a half uh, acres of actual floodplain land within the 243 acres. Uh, that does not pose a problem for our plans to put three campuses on this school. You can see then the bubble diagrams where the elementary school would go on one side of the creek on the, on the property, and you can see where the middle school would go up here, and then you can see where the high school would go there uh, on the south end. You can also see the road system that we have planned that goes through the property. Uh, of course, one day the hopes would be probably that that would become a public road system. Um, but the elementary school, as you know, would come through, the road to it would come through the neighborhood. You notice that we have plenty of room here where we're placing the future elementary school to get the stacking out of the neighborhood, and get it onto the property uh, around the elementary school campus. Uh, one of the questions was uh, a, a bridge to join the two pieces of property together. Uh, in our opinion, uh, a bridge uh, would be great at some point in the future. Is it necessary to start building these schools and to develop these projects? It's not. It's not necessary. We can build that elementary school with that road system and keep that totally separate from the other two schools and never spend the money on a bridge. So I want to make that clear. It would be great if at some point in the future that can be worked out and the funding for that could be worked out, but it's not necessary. This, this, this track uh, gives you everything you need to put those three campuses there. Uh, all the reports came back positive. Uh, you know, there's a few uh, sinkholes throughout the property. Uh, none appear to be ones that we're worried about uh, that could impact us in a major way. Um, uh, the survey came back clean. The title work's been done, and we feel really good. The whole team feels really good about about this, this property being brought to you. So with that, I'll answer, I'm happy to answer any questions on this site. I've been on it a lot. I've driven around uh, it many, many times and, uh, 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 and really feel good about what we're, what we're bringing to the board. Jamie mentioned the nine acres. Yeah, the uh, smaller triangle here that you see, uh, 
I've got that labeled uh, future development. <coughs> it's about plus or minus nine acres that at this point we may not need for the actual school. Uh, so we think that there's going to be some real commercial potential with that spot. Um, anything from a Dailies or a Sonic or a or a clinic, you know, there could be a lot of options there for the school system at some point with that with that spot. Um, and as far as the fields and things like that, we're not showing those here tonight. Uh, we have placed those around each school in anticipation of what you all would need. The fields that would go with a middle school, the fields that would go with a high school. Of course, the middle school and the high school would be able to share a lot of those fields. One football team may play on Thursday night and the high school would play on Friday night, those kind of things. So there'll be a lot of efficiencies that are going to be able to, to be had by having those two schools so close to each other in that campus feel. But yeah, Stan brings up a great point that that future development there, possibly a commercial development, uh, will have some value to this board. Thank you, Mr. Spencer. So with this nine acre little uh, area, uh, I think what you're saying is there may be a potential that the board could leverage that in order to gain some resources to be maybe for this particular area or throughout the, the district to deal with other needs. Uh, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, in the, it's, it's a bigger, little track that, than you think too. There could be multiple things. It could be a commercial development and then maybe uh, even a future board office could go there. I mean, it could be a, uh, there could be a litany of things for the county that, that you could do with that. Okay. All right, well, I'm gonna open the floor for any uh, questions or uh, discussion by any board members. And of course, uh, I wanna thank Mr. Breeden and uh, Mr. Spencer for providing us um, I think I got about 200 pages or so of documents where uh, a substantial amount of work has gone into uh, reviewing this in order to protect the best interests of the uh, school board. And so we appreciate all the uh, due diligence work that you all have performed. Um, so if there are no questions, yes, Mr. Moore. Uh, I do just have one question. I think Stan spoke to this. Uh, from what I understand is we actually would need to make two motions uh, on to, to get this full thing moving forward. One being on the property, the, the motion essentially as it's presented here is to approve this. The second would be exactly what? To, to approve this contract with ESA to begin the design work. Okay. All right. Um, well, you know, as we've looked at this, and, and I know um, – since we just discussed this at the Marvin Wright edition, um, making long-term plans is something I know I've been really wanting us to, to push ahead with. And I think this definitely meets that goal. Um, and, and also to get back, I know, as I said just a, a few weeks ago about the 10-year uh, the uh, report that we are literally on the eve of getting, um, I think it has been made clear, as, as Stan pointed out from Dr. Register, that that is not uh, this fits well within that. There is, there's no way this isn't going to be a need, regardless of what that report says. So I feel very comfortable moving ahead with this. It looks like, obviously, staff has done a, an excellent job of putting this together and seeking out property. I know you guys put a lot of time and effort into this, and I do appreciate uh, our superintendent and, and uh, uh, Mr. Spencer and, and, and all of you guys, uh, the staff as well, for, for putting that much time and effort into doing this. I know this was not an easy task to find property uh, in an area that is um, – as you said, very quickly, there's almost nothing left to, to look for a campus type site or even for individual schools, to be honest. With so, sewer. Uh, with, with sewer as well, yes. So uh, with that said, I, I would go ahead and make a motion that we uh, move ahead with this, uh, with this purchase. All right, so we have a motion by Mr. Moore to ratify the uh, contract that has been presented to us in order to allow us to move forward and close on this property. Is there a second? Second. All right, we have a second. By Mr. Beaver. All right. Is there any discussion on that motion? Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, Ms. Walker. A couple of things. Uh, number one, um, a little bit of clarification on the motion. What you're authorizing is to approve the contract and move forward with closing. Uh, I'm assuming that you're going to want the direct, uh, Dr. Marzak to sign off on the closing paperwork. So I'd ask that if that's the case, put that in the motion as well, authorizing him to, uh, to sign on behalf of the school system. Um, timing has kind of become an issue because this contract, we envisioned a, a much longer period of due diligence that might be necessary and uh, Hewlett Spencer has greatly outpaced that and that's great. Uh, that has created some a little ancillary issues. Uh, the, the seller hasn't been able to do everything that the seller was supposed to do to be able to get the property ready to close. 
these are minor things, but I, I want to bring them to your attention. Uh, the, the tenant, there's a tenant in, in the uh, residence on the property. Uh, that residence is eventually going to be torn down. Uh, the tenant's not going to be out until January the 31st. They've put the tenant on notice, but the tenant hasn't moved out yet. Uh, if you close before the 31st, you're taking on that tenant. Uh, obviously, again, in a big project like this, that's not a huge issue. Uh, we can work with the tenant and, and try to get that taken care of, but, but the tenant is going to be there until the 31st. Uh, there's some cows on the property. I understand that's under the terms of a, a lease also, and that the cows won't be gone until the 31st. Uh, the, the sellers still have some personal property in the in the home. They want to come get those. That, obviously, that's something we can take care of at closing. Uh, the, the contract allowed the sellers to remove some barns and to salvage some lumber. Uh, they haven't been able to do that yet, obviously, because things have moved a lot quicker than even we anticipated. So they want to continue to be able to do that even after closing. Uh, we can put some deadlines on that. We can take care of that. But I want you to know that you know it's it's not as clean as as if they were already ready to go and, and everything was ready to, to close out. Uh, but if you tell us to close as soon as possible, then you're closing with those with those issues that we'll work through and, and try to get rectified. Uh, but I want to bring that to your attention uh, and, and get a little bit of clarification on the motion just to give us timing and say, okay, not only do we approve the contract, but we're ready to close either immediately or we're ready to close at the end of January or however you want to do that. Mr. Bates, if I could on that, um, on my motion. I, I, yes, I, I, my understanding is that we had already given uh, our superintendent and staff the, the authority to, to pr proceed as under their best interest. And I would think that as with the closing dates or any other details that need to be worked out, I would, my part of my motion would be for, we're, we're approving this and for the superintendent to continue to work out the, the details as needed, uh, obviously in our best interest. All right, so I know we've got to ratify this contract. Uh, these other minor things, it sounds pretty minor. Is that correct, Mr. Uh, Mr. Wallover, would you say, as far as just to... That may need to be resolved in order to finalize everything for closing. All right, let me just ask, so are, are we, as a board, can we authorize the superintendent, just like we authorized him to enter into contracts condition upon our approval, can we authorize to allow him to make those decisions and also to sign the closing documents in order to close? Yes, definitely. We've we got to have a, a, a signatory. Um, obviously, you know, you've got to designate one person to be able to come and, and sign those documents or it would be more, but uh, we do have to know who's going to sign. Okay. All right. So, Mr. Moore, I think if I understand correctly, I just want to make sure we got our record correct. So, is it your motion then to ratify the contract and then to authorize our superintendent to close and to sign on behalf of the board, as well as to make any final decisions necessary in order to close on the property? Okay. Is there any anything else you need on that motion, Mr. Wallover? Okay. All right. So that motion was by Mr. Moore, and it was seconded by Mr. Beaver. Mr. Beaver, do you consent to? Oh, no, I'm sorry. Talking to Sheriff. Do you consent to that change of the motion? Yes, okay. Sir. All right. So Mr. Beaver does consent to those clarifications on the motion. All right. Is there any discussion on the motion? All right, so what would this 
passwords again. Okay, there we go. Jake's got it. Good, you're a step ahead of me, Mr. Walliver. That was aggravate me a little bit. Yeah, that's much better. Well, do you also, we need to include and then authorization to make any changes necessary to close? Well, I kind of, I mean, I think the board wants to close as soon as possible. So how do you want to say that? I've solved issues related to closing. I mean, I don't need that in my part. You're, you're telling him to move forward as soon as possible. Right, but now, like, if you're having to make changes to the contract because of some of these other leftover issues like tenants and things like that. If he has to sign any additional documents, no, we need to have some sort of authority authorizing that. You, okay. All right. Okay. I'm good with that. Okay. So put a period after documents to take out and authorize. There. All right. Mr. Waller, do you feel secure now okay because you'll need something from the minutes I guess in order to uh, when he's signing those documents so okay all right so everybody understand what the motion is we have a motion we got a second any discussion seeing now ready about All right. So that motion does pass unanimously. Yes. Okay. Good deal. And, uh, Mr. Breed, you need another motion to approve yeah, the yes, architect. Sir. Yes, sir. Contract. What we've done, just because time is of this, we're trying to make, make it to have an elementary school ready no later than two years from now, possibly sooner. And so talking with ESA, they've been very kind to work with us on doing some work that they've not charged us for, but they would, they can't, they can't do anything else for us for free. So we would need a contract in place, which you have in your packet for you to approve. And because of the fact that we are moving so fast, I mean, there is money in the budget that was included for the design of the school, but we would just like to ask you to approve the contract and authorize $50,000 to get started on the programming to begin the schematic phase. And again, not to get too deep, but, you know, we'll start with a schematic design of what we're going to come bring that back to your approval. And once you approve that, then they'll actually begin the design development. The schematic phase, we'll bring a committee of stakeholders together and begin working on that. And we, we'd like to start working the first week of January. Good deal. Mr. Breed, so this uh, $50,000, that would come out of the new uh, school development fund. Right, well, out, four, of those, out of that capital bond. Yeah, $4.5 million, which was for the purchase of land and the development okay. of new schools. Okay, so that's uh, where that funding would come from. And then, uh, since we are approving the contract, can we maybe get a deadline out of them before we approve it, you know? Maybe they're going to get it. <coughs> no, I'm just kidding. But I do want to reiterate that um, – we do want to try to get this done as quickly as possible and just 
some of the we don't want to be arbitrary with dates that you know we want things done by a certain day just to pull the date out of the air we as a board are operating under certain timetables that we don't pick they're, they're not of our choosing where the state requires budgets to be done budgets to be presented to the county commission and i would like for us to be able to if humanly possible uh, to be able to have something where we can go to our funding body and ask for funding this year uh, so I don't want this to be put off until next year to have to ask for funding. And our window is, you know, we put these planning horizons. Really, we need to be able, as a board, need to be able to approve a capital budget probably in the April time frame to be able to submit that to our county commission in the May time frame. And so that's, that's a difficult time frame to operate under, but that's what I would, as the chair and maybe other members feel the same way, is I would like for us to be able to look at a uh, GMP uh, for an elementary school maybe by around the April time frame. And I know that's a, so that's a causing uh, hyperventilation over there already, but, uh, but that's, that's again, and, and I want you all to understand where we're coming from as far as our timetable, that we've got to get certain things so that then we can then go to our funding body to ask for certain funding because ideally I would like for us to be able to secure the funding so that possibly we could start construction this summer. So uh, that's a lot to get done in a short amount of time. Now, I don't want to rush things where we're not doing, thing, doing our due diligence and, and that sort of thing, so I completely understand that. Uh, with that, is there a motion to approve the ESA architectural services contract up to the amount of $50,000 to be utilized from our uh, capital fund, the new uh, school development fund. I've got a motion by Mr. Atkinson. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Moore. Any discussion on that motion? Seeing now we're ready to vote. So it should just say motion to approve the SA contract up to fifty thousand dollars. Just put motion to approve the SA contract up to fifty thousand dollars. Take everything else out. No, that's it. <coughs> the only thing I would clarify is the fifty thousand dollars is just to get us started. We'll obviously come back with a more definite figure and and within probably at next month's meeting or the following meeting, so you can, well, $50,000 is not going to sign the building. I think everybody understands that $50,000 is to get, to get us started. going. Just okay. to get started. Yes, All right. Sir. Thank you, Mr. Breeden. And thank you for that additional information. So any other discussion? You call it programming? Yes, programming. We're going to programming of the schematic design. Okay. All right. Any other discussion? Say a number, read about.
All right, that motion does pass on a vote of 10 to 0. Moving on, uh, Mr. Moore, it looks like our next meeting is going to be coming up on January 5th. That's going to follow our Policy and Community Relations Committee. And that was just us pre-planning in case the board did decide to fund the uh, Marvin Wright edition. We didn't want to hold anything up. We've got to hit the ground running on that. So uh, we'll, we'll be looking at that uh, on January 5th, and we should have – a guaranteed maximum price, uh, a little bit more specific information that we'll have on that uh, night. And uh, Mr. Moore, it looks like your regular meeting is on January 12th. Any other reports? That is all. All right. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Moving on to our policy committee, uh, Chair Parker, uh, in our agenda, you've got several, your committee has several recommendations for final approval of some changes. And uh, I guess I'll turn it over to you to read every single one of those into the record. No, I'm just kidding. We've, we've all got that in front of us so we can see what we're uh, looking at. And is this a, I guess, Chair Parker, you've reviewed this. This is what has come out of your committee and everything looks to be in order on that. Well, you know, we didn't meet in December, so this is just a continuation of November okay. for the final okay. approval. So this is from things that we had approved for posting in November. Okay. So this is for final approval. So once we vote on this, these uh, changes will be made. Uh, is there a motion to approve those uh, recommendations for final approval? Yes. We got a motion by Ms. Kinzer. Again, that does not require a second since it came out of the committee. Is there any discussion on the motion to approve and adopt those changes? Seeing now, I'm ready to vote. Motion by Ms. Kanzer does not have a second. All right, so that motion is unanimous uh, that uh, those changes are approved for final uh, adoption. All right, moving on, we also, uh, uh, Chair Parker, your committee has made some recommendations to make some deletions, and those uh, proposed deletions have been um, posted for the required time, so we're back to make uh, a final vote to approve those deletions. Is there a motion to approve? All right, motion by Ms. Martin, any discussion? Seeing no, ready to vote.
All right, that motion uh, does pass on a vote to 10 to zero. Moving on, um, <coughs> Chair Parker, looks like your next meeting is Thursday, uh, January 5th, 2017. Any additional reports? Thank you, Thank you Chair Parker. All right, moving on to uh, committee relations. Um, Chair Powers, it looks like your next meeting is also on Thursday, January 5th. Is there any additional reports from your committee? And, and let me also note, uh, fantastic job with the uh, parade. I think that was a, a big hit again this time around. And, and I think it was also uh, good all your uh, coordination with the commission. The recent Christmas dinner was uh, uh, fantastic as well. Thank you, Chairman Bates. Um, and it, the, our participation in the Christmas parade, I think, was a success in uh, Mount Pleasant and in Columbia. Unfortunately, Spring Hill was rained out after David Moore got the float and took it down there. So thank you for all that effort. Um, several thank yous. Um, David Moore and Mr. Beaver got out power tools and um, made a lot of neat things for our floats. Um, Ms. Kinzer and Shirley came out with a lot of ideas and art talent. Um, Donna did organize the uh, Mount Pleasant parade and just central office came through with shining colors. It was amazing um, with the rain out and then the post, you know, the float being postponed and some complications we had with construction. Just uh, Mr. Perryman uh, and maintenance just did an amazing job. It was very appreciated and just central office was there with bells on for the parade. It was um, a wealth of central office. I felt very, very supported and very, very, very appreciative. So thank you. And I think our next meeting is on the 5th. All right, thank you, Chair Powers. All right, moving on um, to new business. Uh, Dr. Woodard, looks like we've got a presentation regarding our 2017-18 proposed school calendar. Now I'll turn it over to you. Greetings, uh, Chairman Bates and distinguished board members, and happy holidays to all of you. Uh, this evening, I've prepared for you a sample copy of the 2017-18 school calendar for your approval. Uh, I'd like to take a couple of minutes uh, just before I go over this to kind of answer any questions that you may have and talk about some of the more important aspects of the calendar and answer or alleviate any concerns. Um, this calendar is aligned with the previous calendar that we've had uh, during the previous year and similar to the ones we've had over previous years. Uh, because of the 1718, because the 1718 calendar mirrors uh, what we have previously done, we polled a smaller number of uh, individuals for feedback. Uh, we did poll uh, counselors, uh, support employees. We spoke with some principals. Uh, we spoke with several uh, central office uh, administrators and also the executive staff. Uh, even with the executive staff, we had some very hard conversations about what's right, what's in the best interest of kids, and also uh, what is in the best interest of parents and what's also in the best interest of the school system. So there were some very hard conversations there and we felt like we vetted this pretty well. Uh, in addition to that, uh, based upon the director's input, we uh, felt that it would be prudent to remain on the traditional calendar for one additional year before possibly adopting a new calendar, uh, a new two-year model, uh, possibly for 18-19. In January, we plan to come to you uh, with a two-year proposal for the 18-19 school year that would uh, include a modified traditional calendar and that would include a balanced calendar for you to review. We've also polled uh, several constituents in the community regarding that calendar, and we've received over 500 responses. So we've gotten a large feedback, and we're excited about sharing that feedback with you in January at the Academic Committee. With regards to the uh, calendar that's on the agenda for tonight, uh, we have 13 stockpile days in this calendar. Eight of those days are inclement weather days. Five of those days are for professional development. As you can see, those PD days are coded in pink on the calendar. The calendar starts with July 26th through the 29th. Those are in-service days, which will allow for capacity building for principals to work with their staffs during that time and to set the tone for the school year. If you look down to the 31st, that'll be the first teacher prep day for teachers to get ready for the first day of school. August 1st will be the first day of school. There's no change there. And then, of course, on August 2nd, we have a professional development day for teachers, and that a day allows uh, counselors to do some scheduling adjustments it allows for enrollment adjustments for new enrollees, and of course, it allows for staffing adjustments with teachers as well. So I know there was concern about the August 2nd day and that time in between, and I'd be happy to ask and answer any questions about that uh, at the conclusion of this. 
Moving down to September, we have one PD day in uh, September, September the 1st. Moving into October, we have fall break, and that's October the 2nd through the 6th. It is a full week. November 17th, we have a PD day. That's PD day number three. Then we move into December 15th, which is the last day of the semester, which is an abbreviated day. It is an abbreviated day, but of course, it does count for a full day. By state law, if we stay in school for 3.5 hours, it counts for a full day, and that way we will not take a hit on our attendance. So it does count for a full day. Uh, the other concern is, is that parents requested uh, travel time. Parents would like to get the early jump on traveling. We have many families in Murray County that want to travel during that time, and we felt like this would help them get the early jump. If we took that day away, we felt like we would pay on the other end because families would travel, and then, of course, they would not come back on time, and they would start second semester with uh, absences. So that was a concern there. So we felt like the abbreviated day is justified, and we can have more discussion on that at the end. In addition to that, moving into the second semester, January the 2nd is a PD day. That's PD day number four. Then, of course, we have February 19th, No School for President's Day. March 12th, we move into uh, professional development. That's the final day of our stockpile PD days for the year. Then, of course, we have April the 2nd through the 6th, which will be spring break. April the 7th, of course, is the infamous Mule Day. April 23rd through May the 4th, we're in the state testing period. And then, of course, we conclude the year on May 22nd and 23rd with in-service uh, with the uh, administrative in-service. This will allow time for uh, principals to look at quick score reports, go over the summative assessment data with their staffs, and also begin planning for the next school year. So this calendar features 175 teaching instructional days. It features five professional development days that are stockpiled. It features five administrative discretionary in-service days, one teacher prep day, one, I'm sorry, two parent uh, teacher conference days. And if you will look at those parent teacher conference days, I don't see any fourth Thursday conflicts on there. So those, there are no conflicts with uh, board meetings, if you would take a glance at that. Of course, having those days also provides four times a year that parents can assess progress with their children's academics. And then, of course, we have uh, 10 paid vacation days and two paid holidays. Finally, this calendar does meet all Tennessee Department of Education requirements with regard to the number of school and professional development days as outlined by the TDOE. So having said that, I was wondering if there's any questions that I could answer for you this evening. All right, thank you, Dr. Waiter. So let me open the floor for any questions or discussion. Yes, uh, Mr. Dudley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. In, in the past, uh, we haven't uh, closed uh, for Veterans Day. Uh, I, th I think Veterans uh, Day is, is a holiday that uh, for a period of time lost some significance but with the recent conflicts that uh, uh, we've we've been in the United States been in for the last uh, 10 years or more uh, uh, we've had a uh, resurgence of of uh, people in the military service and then a lot of them have lot, <clears throat> given the ultimate sacrifice uh, by giving their lives, and then other them have come home with uh, significant injuries. And uh, I'd like to see us consider uh, closing the schools on Veterans Day so people can uh, attend the Veterans Day events. Uh, uh, there's several large uh, parades uh, uh, throughout the nation and, and uh, other activities uh, to be able to honor our veterans. And uh, I'd like for us to to look at being able to close on Veterans Day. Uh, Mr. Dudley, we can definitely consider that. However, we put on some awesome Veteran Day programs, um, had the honor of participating in those over the past two years at various schools. So if we close, we wouldn't have any awesome programs to put on, but we'll consider it. That's something we'll, 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 we'll look at for the 1819 calendar and, and further. Anybody else? Ms. Parker. All right, sorry, I have to be the bearer of bad news. But um, I don't like, at the beginning of the school year, I don't like the starting and stopping. Mm -hmm. And I know, I, I corresponded with you and I told you my mm -hmm. thoughts on it. Correct. And I looked at other counties around us and I don't, I don't see any other county that starts and stops the way that we do. And I know the, I know the, the reasoning behind it from central mm -hmm. office. But the other thing that I've heard from you is 
we got we got people enrolling for the first month of school so i mean we've got people that are coming in that that haven't done what they were supposed to do as far as pre-registration and i don't feel like parents should be punished because they did do what they were supposed to and they come on to, they come on a tuesday and then they have to find child care monday and wednesday it just seems very um awkward um, and even actually just looking at it now, the way the school year ends, it ends on a Monday. And I know for you with your strive for 95, I mean, if I'm a parent and I want to get a jump start on the on this summer um, break and I don't have a kid graduating or whatnot, why am I going to come to school on that Monday? Um, so I think that just some of those things are things that mm -hmm. I just really, I wish, I want us to keep in mind what parents are thinking too. I know we have a half day in there tomorrow. I still have no idea why my child is going to school tomorrow other than to have a Christmas party. I mean, sorry, Mr. Clayton. But, I mean, I have a babysitter that told, that's watching my kids right now that hasn't been at school for, you know, all week because she's exempt from exams. So I just, I really mm -hmm. struggle with some of this mm -hmm. um, when it's a huge inconvenience for parents for what I think Whitthorn was getting out at 1045 tomorrow. I mean, we're getting out at 1115, which that doesn't seem like three and a half hours, but um, so I don't know. It just, I, I hate the half day, but I can live with the half day. I know that the teachers like the half day. I'll get over it for one. I've, but I, I, I do think that starting, starting on a Tuesday doesn't make a whole lot of sense if we're not just ready to go. And I think that, I mean, I've got, an, I've got an elementary kid, so my kid's excited to go to school. And so to have to be like, hey, son, you got to go on Tuesday, but, oh, you get to stay at home on Wednesday. But then you get to go back on Thursday. It's a hard conversation for parents to have, and I just don't see how it really plays into us wanting kids to come and, and really encouraging parents to do what they're supposed to as far as registering their kids in advance. Well noted. Um, there are some districts that, that follow a similar calendar. Uh, Metro Nashville Public Schools also has a day in between. Um, I will justify this by saying again that um, the, the first week of school can be a very hectic time for administrators and for counselors. And um, trying to make sure that every child is scheduled and enrolled. And then there are always kids who show up on the first day of school who you've never seen before. We don't want those parents having to put their kids in the auditorium and wait to get schedules and so having a day in between allows for a smooth transition for the first week of school otherwise it all runs together and you have absolute chaos um I, I wish i could tell you that every time you would load the master schedule into the system that every kid's schedule comes out perfectly it does not and what happens is that counselors have to spend their time trying to go back and fix schedules for kids who are already previously enrolled on top of trying to schedule kids who are newly enrolled and so all that begins to run together at one time with one day, and administrators have to manage that chaos, and it is extremely difficult. Um, so I, I do get it. I, I greatly respect your concerns. I respect them. I understand the start and stop. I do get it. But I just wanted to kind of, again, uh, put this out there. Um, counselors were begging to keep this day, begging to keep this day so they could feel like they got the year started on a good note. And again, uh, how we start the school year sets the tone for the year. And so uh, if the year starts chaotic and hectic and people feel rushed and there's this sense of anxiety, it makes for a really stressful, uh, tough year, the first part of the year. But that's my thoughts on that, and I do respect what you're saying. And, and having been an elementary principal, that, that day right after the first day was difficult, but I also know my colleagues that had grades 6 through 12, it was vastly important for them. Mm -hmm. So it was, it, for me as an elementary principal, it was a detriment, but for my high school and middle school counterparts, it was beneficial because then they got to fix all the schedules when no kids are there and they're just sitting and waiting and sitting in the auditorium. So it's understandable. I think there are other solutions that we could come up with that would, I mean, whether it's starting on a Thursday and a Friday or something like that, but starting on a Tuesday and then having that break on Wednesday, again, if it was just one day that parents are having to, or if, even if you started school on a Monday, um, but having one day, of having to find child care, not two consecutive days, mm. but two days in a week that are not consecutive, 
as someone that has children, I'm just telling you, it's not right. easy. Yeah. So. And no, unfortunately, no. the way this calendar lays out, because August 1st is on a Tuesday, in order to start school on Monday the 31st, you have to have permission from the Commissioner of Education by law to start before August 1st. Right. And that, that's gonna, that would take time and delay the, delay the process. But definitely understandable, definitely. Mr. Moore. No. Yeah, I, I appreciate it. a couple of things on this. I'm still, I, I know when you went through that you, you feel like you did a good job of internally doing this. I still didn't hear any mention of, of parents or, t I mean, of parents or, or students in that process about getting this. And just to be honest, I, maybe I'm wrong. It looks like we just, it looks like you guys are focusing on two and three years out. More importantly, you're going to bring that in January, I think you said. And this is just, we just grabbed last year's and threw it out here again. That's what it looks like. Okay. Um, because, I mean, I, I'm disappointed that we didn't have the process that in years past we did where there was a, a panel put together and there were a wide variety, not just staff. Because, I, I mean, I heard a lot of concerns, but most of those concerns are coming from just staff and internal. Um, as, as we're talking about here, I know several of us are, are parents with, with children, and I, and I right. would echo her concerns about half days, which are a complete and utter waste of time as far as I'm concerned. Um, Anyway, and and the, the split days, they just don't make sense. But beyond that, I'm, I'm more frustrated that we didn't go through what I feel like was, was what policy called for, which was to put together an actual panel, not to kind of ask around internally and then call that a panel. I mean, I feel like we really should continue to do that to get the input from parents and the students, more parents than students, to be honest. Uh, but I, I just feel like that didn't take place. Now, maybe that's going to take place again. I would like to still see that. I still think there's some issues. I know you said... And I'll have to go back and look at my dates. We haven't called these as I know you said the, the the fourth Thursday aren't on there, but there's still some from the second week, which is going to hit the week of committee meetings. So we're still going to run into that, I believe, uh, on the, yeah. Uh, so we've got several of those months that are going to run into committee. And, and we've said this before. I really, and again, if not just for this one, I do not want to ever ask, and I'm, I'm picking up where Jerry Laster left off on this, mm -hmm. We should not ask any of the staff to have to decide whether they're at parent-teacher conferences or have to come to a meeting to do something. There's just no reason for that when we're planning a schedule out two years in advance or one year in advance. Mm -hmm. uh, we just should we should be able to figure that out, where we're not asking uh, anybody to have to choose or even board members. Again, we've said that for a long time. It would be nice to be able to be at these um, the parent-teacher conferences and not have to choose whether you're going to go to that for your own children or just go to see the schools uh, that we have. There's a lot going on those evenings, uh, or have to be here having a wonderfully exciting meeting. Um, I don't know what the answer is. I, do you, when does this have to be approved? I know we've got, I've had parents for a month and a half been asking me for this. When mm -hmm. does this have to be approved or, or is there any way we can actually have some more input or some more time to talk about some of these issues uh, that, that some people have, board members, or even get some input from some parents on this? Um, is there a hard and fast date we have to turn this in? Yes and no. Um, I, I, I would, I would highly recommend that we move forward with this because the community has been waiting on this for a while. Um, this has to be approved in the data system by the state by March. That's when they approve it. Of so course, that, I mean, you, I, you I, understand, would, I understand we have some concerns on time, but it sounds like we right. do actually have till March to do this. And trust well, me, I've had parents that have been bothering me about this for a while too. And, right. I, and as a parent, I understand that. However, I don't want to rush through on a product that I don't think we put enough thought into, to be honest. Again, the impression I get is that you guys are focused more on the year after this and then the next year after that. That's what you're really wanting to put your effort and time into. I'm just not seeing that anybody's, that that's been put into this one. This seems like a carryover. And I would rather us put a little bit of time, even if it's just a, a, a truncated version of what's been done in the past. From what I understand, there were several meetings where uh, a, a panel was put together and they, they met several times and brought something forward. I'd still like to see that. Well noted. Thank you. Any other discussion? All right, open the floor for a motion to approve or motion to continue or whatever is the will of the uh, members. All right, got a motion by Ms. Kinzer. Is there a second? All right, got a second by Mr. Dudley. Any discussion on the motion? All right, seeing that we're ready to vote.
All right, so that motion does pass on a vote uh, six to four. All right, so moving on to the next item on the agenda. Um, uh, let's see. All right, so uh, Mr. Gaines, looks like uh, you have a bid that you've uh, submitted to the board uh, that your office is recommending for approval. Uh, the amount is $45,426 for Power School Learning Management System. Um, so maybe this may be something to give us a little bit of a kind of a synopsis as to what this is and how we got here. Uh, good evening. Happy holidays. A, a learning management system is a system that will integrate our assessment, our, our, our grades, our, con our curriculum content, our student attendance. Uh, we'll be able to assign lesson plans. It kind of puts everything together for um, uh, teachers and students in a classroom. Uh, we want to go ahead and, and uh, begin to implement this learning management system as we start to go to the one-to-one -one process because uh, that way students as they have their uh, devices, they'll be able to access what the teacher is assigning, they'll be able to look at assignments, we'll also be able to add content, we'll be able to do that digitally. So. Uh, as a, my memo said, we're trying to unify the curriculum, and that learning management system does that for us. Thank you, Mr. Gaines. And this was part of our 16-17 budget, is that correct? This is not a, a new It is type part thing. of that, uh, that uh, the uh, uh, money that we're getting in the, uh, for our, our technology, part of that technology budget. Okay. So this is uh, utilizes some of the state funding that yes, they sir. provided for technology. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. All right. Got a motion by Mr. Moore. Second. All right. Second by Ms. Morency. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All right, that motion does pass. It is unanimous. Moving on to uh, surplus, Mr. Breeden. Mr. Chairman, at the last meeting, you uh, approved the items that we were uh, presenting in our fall surplus sale. We're actually a little bit behind on having that sale, and these are some additional items that we found that were left off the list. So if you would go ahead and approve these, we can get them in on the sale that we're going to have here at the end of the year. All right. Motion by Mr. Moore. Second by Mr. Atkinson. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All right, that motion is approved. It is unanimous. Moving on to finance, uh, we have some budget amendments. Um, Scott, Scott's got them. All right, Mr. Gaines. Let me ask you, Mr. Gaines, I, I know that uh, we're, we're going through a transition period with our CFO. Um, I guess I got a little bit of hesitancy voting on any amendments at the present time. Are any of these things pressing that we uh, have really need to vote on tonight, or could we wait till maybe the next meeting? Uh, and would, Mr. Chairman, these yes. these uh, funds are are our lottery funds, so they're available for request. We're just requesting to add that budget to the general purpose budget, so it's not a, a fund that would be. Uh, uh, it's kind of it's kind of a part of the GP budget, but it's our it's our pre-K budget, so it's an additional allocation to the state that we get from the state for pre-K, and we're just requesting to add that. And then you see the additional 
one of the budget amendments for the Head Start budget, and they provide those funds for uh, six educational assistants that we employ. And uh, we just request for reimbursement from Head Start, just not request reimbursement from the state for those funds. So really this is just an accounting to add those two, add these lines to the budget. So basically we got the money, the check from the state, and it's a matter of putting these in the right. uh, particular accounts well, that I guess, is this something the accounts a, are typically what we use in the past? Under a request for reimbursement, once we have those expenditures, are actually working on one now, and then we'll receive those funds. Okay. Uh, so we actually, you know, have paid out those funds, and then we'll be doing a request for reimbursement. Okay. All right. Uh, are there any questions or discussion regarding those three amendments that are on our agenda? Is there a motion to approve those amendments? All right, got a motion by Mr. Dudley. All right, second by Mr. Atkinson. Any discussion on the motion? Uh, yes, uh, Ms. Parker. Yeah. All right, I'm showing on my the agenda, it should be budget amendments 4499. Click on XD, the one right above it, and then they're on the right. Go on. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Chairman, while you're looking there, there is a there is a federal programs budget amendment there that's number three. I just wanted to make you aware that and there are two budget amendments that are uh, one's Head Start and one's Lottery Pre-K. Okay. And, and the other one is federal funds. Right. And uh, Ms. Ms. Hammond is still here. If All right, so the, the motion to approve our budget amendments, BA 4499, 4500, and 4502. Any more discussion on that motion? Yes, Ms. Parker. I just, have, I just have a question. Are we confident in some of these numbers as far as life insurance, medical insurance? It's my understanding that some of those payments haven't been made. In those, word. Uh, some of those, uh, you mean they haven't been paid? That we've been having payroll issues um, related specifically to those topics. The way we do that, we project what the life insurance costs are for each employee, and then we budget those. And we just, once we expend those funds, we just request them back. So I wouldn't, I'm not going to request an expenditure for any funds that we haven't expended correctly. So if, if they're being expended, you know, if, if there was a mix up in a line or something, then I'm not going to request it. And we look at, we make sure that the employees that uh, we're requesting funds for are uh, pre K and uh, pre K employees and educational assistants so that we make sure that uh, we're not, if you're, if you're speaking of, that somebody else could have been requesting on our line or something, we no, wouldn't. No, I'm not really saying that. I'm saying are we confident in these numbers? Are we going to have another budget amendment coming back? Because people, are we confident in the the, the ones that we're moving around, essentially, right, for our pre-K assistance? And typically, is that what I'm understanding for Head right, Start and things like that? For, their checks um, haven't been right in a, all the cases. Um, I mean, I don't know necessarily just for them, but I'm yeah. saying we, we don't have faith that I don't. These, these are two unrelated issues. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what? No. That's no. no. Okay. No. These, so these those are, are just unrelated. estimates based on how much people should be paying. Yeah. How by by using, be? by yeah, Dr. Hargrove's involved in this, and this is just budgeting, not paying. So we look at their okay. projected salaries and we create a budget. Uh, and uh, we're not going to expend any more budget than what's out there, what the state allocates. So okay. the state allocates $981,333. And then on the Head Start side, we look at those Head Start assistants, what their experience are, and then we look at what their benefits are. And that's how we get that. Uh, we request that reimbursement from Head Start. So there is a... Uh, yeah, those are just requesting those budgets so that we can add them to the general purpose budget. All right, any other discussion on the motion? Seeing that, ready to vote.
ask them how they want to vote. Um, were you were y'all wanting to vote against this? No, we don't. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Well, we'll wait then. So go ahead and close voting, and they'll be voted automatically, yes. So it's unanimous. Okay. All right, so that vote, I believe, was unanimous. Is that yes. correct? Ten to zero? Yeah, it shows okay. voting yes. All right. All right, so moving on, uh, next item on the agenda, uh, we have uh, a confidential uh, attorney-client conference. It's going to be part of our meeting. Um, Something that I've asked Mr. Wallover uh, since becoming chair is to provide the executive committee on a quarterly basis just a report of what type of litigation, not any detailed litigation, but uh, just a report every quarter uh, just to keep the executive committee uh, apprised of ongoing litigation and anytime, any, in any enterprise, uh, especially a large uh, school system, there's probably always going to be some type of litigation that's uh, going on. So I get that. Uh, the executive committee gets that on a quarterly basis. One of the things that I've asked the, uh, Mr. Wallover to do is also to uh, meet with the board on an annual basis. So we're towards the end of the year and it seemed like a fitting time for him to uh, meet with us. Generally, all of our meetings have to be um, open and in the public, but uh, there is an exception and it makes sense to allow board members to uh, have meetings with our attorney in private or he can be able to have frank discussions with us. So uh, with that, we will, um, uh, go into our attorney-client conference, and we will return when we return. Thank you.